I'm going to take here to finally do my review of the Jet Blaster Sita. Now, I actually have the base model in my hands, and there is a reason why I did that. This is the model of Sita that comes able to fire full-length darts, because as you can see, I have a full-length magazine installed. And that is why I picked it, because I, wanted, I did want to retain the ability to fire full-length darts. Now, this model can fire short-length darts, and it comes with the Katana adapter and a Katana magazine. And included enough of uh, the Jet Blaster darts to fill the Katana magazine at least once. Now, I wanted full-length compatibility. Everybody else, it seemed like, well, probably literally everybody else, I may be the only guy who purchased this model. Everybody else bought the Cita S, which comes with the upgraded internals already pre-installed and short dart only compatibility. I made, the, I made a decision, and I'm sticking with it. Now, you can always go ahead and buy the upgraded internals and drop them in here. Or you can, mod you can always modify it also with retaliator parts that you drop in on your own. Like, say, a metal sled, a modified breech, you know, different springs. You can do what you want. And I personally am going to go that route. Because an alloy sled is one thing I do think that this thing needs. Because... I'll get to that a little bit later, but I think that that's the one handicap of this thing straight out of the box. Now, straight out of the box, what you get is the namesake, of course, being, let me fire that dart that's in it. It has these little pins that allow you to pull out the two pins under the little thumb screws and pull the blaster apart within seconds. And I'll prove my point. Do that, the two thumb screws. And, oh, that one needs to go a little more, a little bit more, blaster apart. Now you have access to the internals, and you can always slide it back together and get it going again. I am going to do this on camera and in real time. Here we are. One thumb screw. Let's drop in a pin. The other pin. That's my typical technique is to get one thumb screw in place and then both pins and then the other thumb screw. And now it's back together. That's actually really nice. Now, of course, the Dart Zone Pro has come out since this was first introduced and stolen a bit of the thunder because it probably does it a little bit better overall. However, the Sita is still less expensive than the Dart Zone Pro. And that's where I think it still has a place. This has a little bit higher grade construction compared to the Big Four. Nerf, Busby, Dart Zone, and X-Shot. The construction is a step up above that. And having that quick takedown ability is quite nice. As well as the buffer tube here accepts a whole wide range of airsoft and real steel type stocks. Which, again, very nice. And having a stock pump grip of this style with metal priming bars is also very nice. And... It does come with the Katana Mag Adapter. If you want to fire short darts, this version gives you the flexibility of full length or short darts. Now, let's get right to the negatives. Nice blaster starting out, nice features. Pistol grip, very comfortable. Pump grip, I actually like this one quite a lot because I am the type of person who will grab and wrap around my fingers around the front to pump and fire, all good. Let's get to the, like I said, let's get to the negatives. The stock is rattly. I have not had any problems with it accidentally collapsing. It has the three positions, it's comfortable, but it does not feel like it's on the same level as the rest of the blaster. I would also comment that about this grip. I had to take it apart and retighten it 
a couple times, and I even, I think I even put a wrap of electrical tape in there to get rid of some creaking. This design here opens it up, up to some flex and some creak. Little bit of an issue in what retails as about a $90 blaster. I've reviewed the Rekt Op 4. I find this construction to be a little bit better than this. Same price. Now, I like the power plant being spring. I'm a springer guy. I like the power plant of this better than the CO2 of the Op 4, but I am still a fan of the Op 4. And I'm just throwing that out as another $90 blaster. Now, of course, all of us bought these things when they were on sale. I think I paid $65 for this. But let's get to, like I said, let's get to the negatives. This right here and this down here can get annoying if you don't do something about it. There are a, quick, a couple of quick fixes. One very quick fix is to string a rubber band through each one. And then loop another rubber band through both of those rubber bands. I know that's kind of a janky fix, but it works. You can do that and tie those rubber bands together and it will provide a little bit of pulling pressure between those and it will keep it tight and you'll get rid of some rattle. And I mentioned rubber bands because also the rubber itself of the rubber band will kind of connect to there and provide a little bit of a bumper. So it's kind of a two for it. By having some tension, the rings don't rattle. By having the rubber between the metal uh, key ring and the plastic shell, it also provides a little bit of uh, sound deafening property there. The other negative right off the bat is I don't know how much profit margin they've got on these things, but could we not get an aluminum bolt sled? Could we not? Please? Bump it up ten more dollars? Because I know uh, on NF Strike I ordered a couple of alloy bolt sleds for retaliators and they're not cheap. They're twenty seven dollars. And okay if you said that the production cost of that's about half, you'd be looking at that's thirteen fifty. Can we not bump this up ten bucks? Because they probably have the margin there, or if they had to fifteen, go so go to a a ninety five to a hundred dollar blaster with an alloy bolt sled. I don't think too many people complain about that because if you test out higher spring rates, they, the stock spring is rated at six kilograms. Keep that in mind. If you test out even eight or nine kilogram springs, it starts, you start to see a lot of flex in that. I don't think that's much stronger of a bolt sled than the stock retaliator one. It's probably better than that because stock retaliator sleds are pretty junky. But I don't think it's much better. I don't think it's even on par with, say, like an Orange Mod Works or a worker sled. Because I see a lot of flex. Because you can, you can look right in there and see the clear bolt sled. And I see a lot of flex with a slightly upgraded spring. And let's get to the other negative. Most people had already seen reviews, like say Bradley Phillips, he did reviews on this. The performance is fairly inconsistent out of this breech. This is the base breech, but it's also the only one that accepts full length darts. And that was, I, I either say, okay, I'm not gonna fire full length darts, or I'm gonna deal with a breech that has some issues. And I wanted to see firsthand for myself. And I have been using this thing off and on now for a, a few months. And, well, a little over two, to be exact. And I have found those issues to come up. Like, I think Bradley Phillips, when he originally showed it, way back when, he had ranges from his chronograph readings basically mirror mine. I went back and finally watched his video again, and he was having shots all the way down into the 60s, and all the way up to almost 100. Then yeah, that's that's pretty accurate. You you see a wild variation of shots. One shot may rocket out and fly straight and true and be very nice velocity, and you can tell that's a hundred FPS or better shot. Because I had shots with certain darts going all the way up to 115 feet per second. That means that means there's a, a ceiling issue with the breach, because I had also shots going dropping all the way down to 60 FPS with darts that weren't bad, 
these were good condition darts. And it could actually be the same kind of darts. I'll, I've stopped giving exact averages on my reviews for quite some time now, because I'd rather give you a, a genuine, honest range. Well, when the range on the exact same dart, because you guys who watch my channel all the time, you know that I'll say I used a variation of darts and got ranges, you know, from, we'll say, 65 to 90 FPS. Well, it's not because I use different darts. <laughs> Using men guns in this, I've seen like a 35, 40 foot per second spread. That's a lot. To see a 30, 40 FPS spread using the same exact darts, the same magazine of darts even, shows a consistency issue in the breach. I mean, if, I, if it was my own brass breach, I would know that I did something wrong. There's not a good seal somewhere, and air is escaping on some shots, whereas others, when I pump it, it's getting a good seal, and that's what's happening in this breach. It's just not, not the greatest design. And my, my idea now is I need to look at what parts I'm going to install into this to retain full length compatibility while getting more consistent performance. Because I do want this to become one of my primaries. I love the blaster overall. I like the, the feel. I like the finish. I love the, the red and black. I, I love how comfortable this thing is. And it's very smooth. Very smooth in soft form. And I like it. I haven't had a whole lot of jamming issues, or I've had zero mechanical issues of any kind. And I love the quick takedown. And for me, right now, this is this is kind of overkill for a backyard blaster. But that's what I've been using it as. And, you know, just playing against... My wife and kids, that's, this is overkill. <laughs> but it's a very nice blaster. And I could see it being... You're, if you're somebody who does not have a collection of blasters. And you're wanting to look for one good one. Yeah, I, I do see this as being a, a, a good choice for you up there. Especially if you're a Springer fan. And especially if you were going to have two blasters. And you wanted to retain the same platform. Well, if you don't need peak performance... This would be pretty nice to have, as well as having a Cita S if you wanted one for competitive short dart usage. And then you would have a cross-platform, so if you needed a spare part, well, you could swap receivers. You know, if something went wrong, you could scavenge parts back and forth. Just, just an idea. But even despite the consistency of the breach, and I'm going to be completely forthcoming with that, if you buy this model, you are going to have some dart consistency issues. Not jamming, not problems like that. You're going to have issues where this shot might fire at 95 feet per second. The very same kind of darts. Next shot may be at 70. And that can be a little bit frustrating when trying to range your shots. You know, with, with a blaster that, say, you, I've built... Like my uh, bolt action right here, you see this thermal tracker that's custom painted. That is a nice, consistent blaster. It will fire. Now that I've done some work on it, that thing consistently fires at around 130 to 40 feet per second all day long, every day. And then I fire precise pros out of it, and it fires at 160 all day long. That's nice. You know, it's nice to have. I, I can get used to where I need to aim at a given range. This... You go to range and fire. You've got your target lined up. You're looking at them. You're looking at that target. You've got them picked out. And you're like, okay, I've got that shot. Boom. And the dart falls way short. Well, you think, okay, raise it up. You fire that second shot. Then the dart goes sailing way over because of inconsistency in the breach. That is a problem. And I want to make sure it's clear on that. But it's a problem I, I kind of want to tackle and see what I need to do with this blaster. Because, I mean, worst case scenario, I go buy the upgraded components, drop them in, and I've got a 150 FPS blaster. And if you, I'm going to say this right now, if you have no interest in firing full-length darts, don't buy this. Don't. Don't buy this model at all. Buy the S. The S is significantly better if you're going to fire exclusively short-length darts. 
There's no reason to buy this if you're going to do that. But if you want Lacita and you want full length compatibility, this is the model to get. The base model. And I still find it, I still find it to be a valid blaster that has some hiccups. I want it to put an alloy bolt sled and I want to improve the breech. That's going to have to come out of my pocket. So that's additional money on top of the original cost. I am glad I got it on sale at 65 and that's what I would suggest to you to do. I'm not going to wholeheartedly recommend this, which I've done with very recent blasters like the X-Shot Chaos Orbit. That thing, fantastic. Go buy it. I don't care if you have to pay full retail. This, if you're going to get this model, wait for a sale. Wait for a sale and please keep in mind, it is not a consistent firing blaster is mechanically sound and reliable, but that breech does not seal well. And unfortunately, I almost had the idea to get rid of the whole idea of a sealed system completely. Uh, the barrel material's not the best. It's not, and that may be a big part of the problem. I may try a different barrel, or I may get rid of the barrel entirely and just have it be an open system and you know, I don't think you'll really lose much by that because if I throw in an 8 kilogram spring and a metal bolt sled and just have it be open, at least I can fire Buzzy Precise Pros. Because this is a semi sealed, I'll call it, and you cannot fire Adventure Force waffle tips. You cannot fire Buzzy Precise Pros. And it does not like Action Strike copies particularly. I have had severely reduced performance to uh, it not wanting to feed them. But that's specifically because it does not like the larger heads. And that's, I didn't mark it against this blaster because that is typical of semi-sealed-ish breaches, all the way up to full seal breaches. But that's familiar, and if you do brass barrels and sealed breaches, you're familiar with that. You know you can't use those arts. This, however, I, I'm going to leave it on that. It's a mixed review. I cannot give it a wholehearted recommendation. I actually still like the blaster myself. And I would recommend, if you do want to pick up a CETA that can fire full-length darts, this is the only option. Wait for a sale. And then get ready to tinker a little bit. Because that's what I'm going to be doing now that I've done my review on this. This is Mongoose Jake saying, I hope you enjoyed this and hope it was informative and gives you a little bit of, say, pre-purchase awareness. Because most everybody else reviewed the CETA S. Bradley Phillips looked at the original model years ago. Please take a look at his review as well. Very informative, very professional. And then also keep in mind what I've said here. But again, this is Mungus Jake saying thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed it.